Hello, and welcome to Developing and Refining the Effective Communicator in You workshop. Communication is a skill that you can learn. It's like riding a bicycle or typing. If you're willing to work at it, you can rapidly improve the quality of every part of your life. I'll introduce our coaches who will be leading and managing the workshop. Coach A is Crystal Castellanos. She is currently the HR Director at Southwire and has four years professional experience. She received her Master's of Business Administration from the University of West Georgia and is a published author as well. Her specialties include employee development and communication. Coach B is myself. Uh, my name is William Barnwell. I'm a customer service manager at Delta Airlines with over 10 years of professional experience. I also received my Master's of Business Administration from the University of West Georgia, and my specialties include customer communications and process improvement. Coach C is Joshua Albi. He's the Director of Sales at Hamby and Alosio Inc. He has seven years of professional experience in insurance and agent management and he received his Bachelor's of Business Administration from the University of West Georgia with a major in Management. His specialties include engagement and conflict studies. So what is our communication workshop all about? Well, we've got some objectives. Objective one, we want our participants to practice and learn how to give and receive constructive feedback as opposed to feedback that is negative or doesn't uh, really get the point across that you might be trying to uh, to get across. We want to make sure that the feedback that you're providing is useful for, who, for the recipient of the feedback. Objective two, we want to teach you how to become active listeners as opposed to passive listeners. You need to be listening to uh, other cues other than uh, just the words that are coming out of their mouth. There's a difference between hearing and listening and we're going to try to distinguish between the two and help you understand what you need to know to become a better listener. Objective three, uh, we're going to learn to dissolve and resolve conflicts. We have some activities that are planned that will allow our participants to role play and put themselves into situations that they might find in the workplace. Uh, we want them to be able to do this in a, in a forum where feedback can be given and participants can assess each other and give feedback to each other on uh, their abilities to dissolve and resolve conflicts. Objective four, we want you to learn to respond to and cope with conflict. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can respond to conflict and we need to make sure that uh, everybody is aware of the most appropriate ways to do this. Objective five, uh, like I mentioned, there's a difference between hearing and listening. We wanna make sure that you know the difference and you know how to use it in practice uh, while you're at work. So. From here, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Joshua Alvey, who is going to do the icebreaker section. This is the icebreaker section of our workshop. We know that you might not know all of your coworkers, but after this exercise, we hope that you know a few more. We believe that having a personal relationship with your coworkers allows for greater communication skills. Knowing your coworkers on a personal level allows for you to understand how they act as a person and how they act towards conflicts. For our icebreaker exercise, we're going to be doing a quick questionnaire. It's going to take between 5 and 10 minutes to finish. The questionnaire is called, How Well Do You Really Know Each Other? The questions on this questionnaire are going to ask you personal questions, such as a few of your favorite things, such as a movie, food, and your favorite vacation spot, along with some others. We ask that you keep these answers confidential, and once everyone is finished, we are going to pass the questionnaires to the aisle. The coaches will then collect them. We will bring them to the front of the room and choose three randomly. We will, be, we will begin to read off answers from a few of the questionnaires, asking for the audience to guess whose questionnaires that we are really reading from. This will allow for you to find things that you may have in common with other coworkers, which you can build a relationship off of. Now I'm going to pass it off to Crystal, who's going to talk about our first topic. Thank you. Today, I'm going to speak to you about what the difference is between hearing, listening, 
And I'm also going to speak to you about what can we learn from these differences? How can we use our understanding of these differences to make us better communicators? How can we be better listeners, better speakers? It's, they serve multiple purposes in our lives, the ability to hear and the ability to listen. But most important is that understanding of the difference. In these next few slides, we're going to be discussing our goals for this section of the workshop, and we're also going to be discussing how we can become better listeners in a variety of ways. So, what are the goals for this portion of the workshop? For this portion of the workshop, we are going to focus on how to become active listeners. I hope that term intrigues you. And I hope that all of you agree that to listen, you must be active in the conversation or the other medium of communication that is taking place. Also, we're going to study how to understand the difference between hearing and listening. We're also going to look at blockers. We're going to learn how to identify them and what we can do to eliminate them. But before we jump too far into this workshop, I would like just to gather some of your opinions. Now, there's an index card placed on the desk in front of you and a pencil. What I would like is for each of you just to write down in two or three words, what does hearing mean to you on one side? And on the other side, I would like to know what does listening mean? I would also like to know, by a show of hands, how many of you think that they're one and the same and there is no difference? Okay, good. Everyone understands there must be a difference. So let's go on and let's explore. But first, I'm going to take a look around and just see what kind of answers we've got on these cards. And some of you are pretty close, but for the others, let's take a more thorough look at this. Okay. So, hearing. Hearing is accidental. It's involuntary. It's effortless. Many conversations that are heard, maybe you don't care about them. You don't, you don't try to listen to them. In fact, you hear people, you hear sounds, you hear communications while you're sleeping. You hear them while you've got your earphones in. You hear them at work when you're trying to concentrate. You hear your kids when there's a million other things going on. You're not listening. So what's really the difference? The difference is that when you listen to someone, you're actively participating in that communication medium. You're focused. You're voluntarily giving your time and your effort. And you're also intentionally listening on all parts of that communication. You're driving yourself to conceptualize, internalize, and understand the message that's being conveyed to you. So, can anyone think of an example where you've heard something before and that you've listened and how they were different? I'd like just to give you guys a second to share amongst each other situations that you've been in. Now, I've also been in this, convert, um, this situation many times, but I would like us just to practice in, in a workplace type situation. In the real world, maybe something you would encounter that would ex let you know the difference between hearing and listening. And maybe this will help you recognize when this is the when someone's hearing rather than listening and that's what's causing an issue. So we're going to play an activity and it's called copy that. <laughs> what we're going to be doing really is just playing telephone. Yes, I know it's old school, but it does serve a message. It, it's very clear especially in a team environment. So let's play. Now, let's all get into a single file line side by side, just like that. Okay, and my other two coaches are in place. We're gonna have coach A at the beginning of the line, coach B at the end. And what we're going to do is I'm going to have one of the coaches start a message and we're going to pass it from left to right. And what we're going to do is we're going to one by one whisper that message into the person on the left of ours ear. 
and we're going to keep going down the line until we get to the end. So let's start that now. Okay, now at the coach, you at the end of the line, can you please say out loud the message? Okay, and now let's go to the coach at the beginning. Interesting. How many of you are intrigued by a show of hands that the message was different? Just about all of you. So what does that say about what happened? What that says to me is that somewhere along the chain, someone was hearing and not actively listening to what the other was saying. And then when they passed along the message, the person next to them who may have been actively listening was not able to internalize and spread that message. When this happens in a team environment, expectations may not be met for projects or conflicts may arise due to a miscommunication. Therefore, it's not only important in our personal lives, but in our professional lives that we learn to be active listeners and that we really learn to identify when the appropriate time it is to hear something and when it is to listen. So here is just a funny cartoon clip that spoke to me. This is um, this is my life experience between hearing and listening and this is something that I probably talk to my husband about on a daily basis. Um, so here is, it's just a silly cartoon displaying a wife giving her husband a set of instructions. And the husband is hearing her. He's not listening to her. So he's only picking up on bits and pieces of what she's telling him to do. And actually what's happening is he's also experiencing communication blockers, which we will get into on one of the next slides. Communication blockers can, which in this case it is, be perceptive filters or selective hearing, meaning he's hearing what he wants to hear. So when she tells him, go to the store, lay down, he's hearing, go lay down, which is probably what he wants to do, which would support selective hearing rather than active listening. Story of my life. Ladies, how many of married you ladies can, can relate? Now, ready, set, action. We're going to do another activity, and this one's going to further our explanations and our experiences with blocks to listening, listening blockers. And what we're going to do is we're going to role play as if we were kept being cast for a movie and read from scripts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to split up into just a few group, just a few groups, maybe six or seven of you in each group, and we're going to read from the script. Okay, and some of you are enablers, some of you are blockers, and I would like you at the end of your script to sit down and reflect individually at first about who you think is an enabler and who you think is a blocker. And then we're going to discuss. So let me give you a few moments just to do that. Okay, now, were any of you able to identify who were the blockers and who were enablers? Awesome. Great. So what type of blockers did you encounter? And how could this affect your teamwork? I'd like you to answer these questions collectively within your groups and share your experiences. But once you've heard everyone's input, I would like you all as a team to come up with ideas of what could have been done better by the blocker to make him able to be an active listener, active listener, excuse me. Now, now that we've gone through the activities and we understand the difference between hearing and, hearing and listening, what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap this up because there's really not much to it. Okay, active listening. What did you do? We practiced. We practiced what's hearing and what's listening, and we now understand the difference. We understand that hearing is unintentional and passive, and listening is purposeful and focused. It's an active process. We've learned how to recognize blockers and take corrective action to fix them. Now, also, we've analyzed perception filters, which is a type of blocker, how to eliminate them, but also how to eliminate them because of the business implications they can cause. 
Now, as we go to our workplace, there's going to be several blockers we encounter on a daily basis, whether it be um, cultural influences, life experiences of each and every different individual, but it's gonna be something we have to deal with. And after this exercise and after the success I've seen with this, I feel very confident that you will be able to go back to work tomorrow, an active listener, and that you will be doing amazingly well um, not only seeking out and identifying these problems that can arise from hearing versus listening and blockers, but also to find process improvement. Thank you all for being such active listeners during my portion of this workshop. I would like to now turn it over to Mike. Mike. I'm going to be talking about topic two entitled Constructive Feedback and, and You. Giving and receiving effective feedback is a crucial talent that all employees should possess. It's very important to uh, running your company smoothly. You want to be able to give and receive feedback in the right way. There, there's the right way to do it and there's the wrong way to do it. And throughout this activity, we hope to highlight both of those. Uh, the feedback learning objectives for this topic include learning appropriate methods for providing feedback in a way that is acceptable and does not belittle the recipient. Uh, we want to provide useful feedback that involves and relates to a clear goal and create appropriate mechanisms for receiving constructive feedback. In order to facilitate this, we've developed a couple activities. Activity one will be a role play activity. Uh, we've developed scenarios and placed these scenarios on note cards that you will receive. These scenarios will simulate an argument or a disagreement. In the first scenario, one participant will provide what could be considered unconstructive feedback to the second participant. And the second participant will play the role of someone who does not understand how to receive feedback. Basically, we want to simulate an argument with this first scenario. In the second scenario, we want the participants to role play as characters who demonstrate how to properly give and receive feedback. So we want to have con con contrasting scenarios here. The first one, we wanna see a disagreement. The second one, we wanna see how to properly handle feedback. For the second activity, entitled Credit Cards, we also have index cards that have been prepared beforehand and will contain various phrases. These phrases will be positive and negative. Uh, they'll have phrases such as, you're a hard worker, or you could pay more attention to detail, uh, things along those lines. Each participant is going to receive five to six note cards and an envelope. Upon receipt of the note cards and, and the envelope, each participant will place their note cards into the envelope of the person they feel the phrase best describes. So you're going to take your note cards and place them in other people's envelopes. After all the note cards have been distributed, each person will review the cards that they received and will go around and have each participant comment on how they feel uh, the cards describe them. Are they accurate? Do they feel that uh, some of them are not so accurate? And so on. Uh, that will be the conclusion of topic two. I'll go ahead and pass it back over to Joshua to to uh, tell you about topic three. Topic three, when employees meet at a crossroad, it's either my way or your way, and this is when a conflict occurs. There are three main objectives that we need to get out of this section. The first objective is learning how to act in a professional manner when conflicts arise. Learning how to act in a professional manner shows that you have respect for the other person that you may be in a conflict with and it shows understanding that you see where they're coming from. The second objective, being able to dissolve the conflict and understand the real cause of the problem, will help solve the conflict sooner. Finding the real cause of the problem will make it easier for the conflict to be dissolved. The third objective Learning to understand that all employees do not look at conflict in the same way. Everyone has a different personality and some individuals enjoy conflict while other individuals run away from conflict as soon as it occurs. Before we go any further, we're going to hand out a pretest. This pretest is going to have a few questions that relate to conflicts that you might come into at work on a daily basis. We're going to let you answer these questions for the next five minutes and then after that we're going to go into the content 
of this section. Now that we're in the content of this section, we're going to go over whether you are passive, aggressive, or assertive when it comes to conflicts. A passive person is someone who steers clear of confrontations altogether. They do not like confrontations at all, and when they do get into a conversations, they are usually the ones that get bullied during the conversation confrontation. You could also be the aggressor in a confrontation. This means that you do not want to hear what the other person has to say. You will either talk over them or just not listen to what they have to say. And then the best option, you can be an assertive person. This is where you listen to both sides of the story, you understand where each person is coming from, and you come up with a compromise that both individuals agree on. Now that we've now that we understand which type of person you might be, let's go to the guided practice. Now we're going to take a post test and we're going to see if your answers have changed at all. And these and these questions are going to be consisted of when a conflict arises, how do you react to it? Are you the aggressor, a passive person, or are you assertive? And then another question would be, another an example is, are you fearful of confrontation? After you finish these questions, we want you to compare with your first test and see how you line up now between the two tests. For the individual practice, we're going to be talking about whether you are proactive or reactive when it comes to confrontations. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of different ways you can react to a, a conflict. You can either be proactive, which means you, you, you want to tackle the problem as soon as possible. You want to take responsibility for any mistakes that you might have made. And you want to show leadership, showing that you know that you might have made a mistake. However, you want to fix the problem so that both parties are happy or you can be reactive where you're influenced by others you wait to tackle the problem however when you do want to tackle the problem it is escalated to a much larger problem and this is when conflicts arise and they last even longer For the individual practice, we're going to hand out a questionnaire. The questionnaire is going to take between 5 and 10 minutes to answer. And the questionnaire is going to have a, a few questions on it about how you would react to conflicts. Here are a few examples of the questions that we're going to ask. Do you have a fight or flight perspective towards confrontations? And another example would be, when do you like to resolve a conflict? Right away when it happens, a few hours later, or do you like to wait two or three weeks to solve the confrontation? After everyone's answered the questions, we're going to ask for a few volunteers to explain to the class how they answered their questions. This will allow for feedback from the coaches as well as other individuals in the class. And this also allows for for you to see how individuals would react to confrontations. So later on, when you might have a problem with them, you will understand the best way to approach them about the conflict that you two are having. In the, in the summary for this section, always remember to act in a professional way. Having respect for people Goes a, goes a long way in the workforce. You will be seen as a better person and it shows leadership. And always look for the real problem. Looking for the real problem will make solving the conflict a lot easier.
and you will be able to solve the problem sooner rather than later. And now I will send it to Crystal who will conclude this workshop. Well, thank you, Josh. It's with heavy heart that I say we've reached the end of this workshop, but there is a good point to it. The good thing is we've gotten to see you grow. We've gotten to see you practice and learn and learn on the go. And that only says how um, flexible and how adaptatious you guys are. And it's been a real pleasure to meet with you guys today and to spend this time with you. But what I would like to do before we leave is just take a few moments to go over what we have learned so that you have a few key takeaways in, in the back of that brain of yours so you can take home and start practicing those communication skills. Well, we have learned the difference between active listening and hearing. Hearing is unintentional. It's accidental at times. But to actively listen to someone, you have to have purpose and intent, and you have to be focused. We've learned to evaluate current active listening blockers and construct methods to not only identify them, but to eliminate them. We've practiced identifying active communication blockers and analyzing the opportunities that result from these blockers. Learning appropriate methods for accepting and receiving feedback is crucial. It's also important that we learn how to give it in a constructive and a professional manner. And we've covered that and you've mastered it. Providing useful feedback also adds to your value as an employee, your ability to lead and to direct and to assist your, your, your peers. It's important and it's important to management and it will help you get pretty far, not only in work, but in your personal life as well. We've also taught you how to act in a professional manner when maybe some unconstructive feedback comes your way and you've done well, to say the very least, you've done pretty great actually. Learning to understand that all employees experience conflict in different ways and sometimes um, create conflict in different ways is important to understand. Being able to dissolve conflict and to understand the root causes of the problem is crucial in today's working environment. More and more organizations are decentralizing and they're moving to more team-based involvement. I would like to take this opportunity to extend my deepest gratitude to each and every single one of you guys for participating in this workshop with us today. I'd like to make a bold, pretty bold statement and let you guys know what I think about you. Don't be scared. It's really good. I think that each and every one of you guys in this room is very bright, you're very adaptable, and you're very smart. And you are tremendous communicators. Actually, I've been so impressed, and I know the other coaches as well that they agree, by your adaptations in this classroom just today, by the growth in, in this classroom, I'd actually like to take the opportunity to extend an invitation, an invitation for you, for you all in this room, to join us as coaches and help us teach other clients as an example. We'd like to make a testament of your growth here today, and I hope you take advantage of this opportunity. But again, schedules are busy, and I know life gets in the way at times. But please keep us in mind. We just want to thank you. We are so grateful for your time, your growth, your dedication, and your openness to this experience. It's been a real pleasure, and I look forward to maybe seeing each and every one of you again. Thank you, and have a good day.